there are actually five sections of the spine, the top being the cervical spine, which is connected to the skull. And then the middle section where your ribs are is the thoracic spine. Typically what we refer to as our low back is the lumbar area. And then that below that is the sacrum and then the tailbone, what we call the coccyx. Stenosis typically occurs either in the lumbar or the cervical area. The thoracic area isn't prone to as much arthritis because there's limited motion because of the ribs. And the sacrum and coccyx are fused elements of the spine that don't move at all. Stenosis in the cervical spine can present very differently. Again, there is nerve tissue inside the canal of the cervical spine, but it controls all the function from the neck down. So the spinal cord is there. And if that becomes pinched, uh, it can cause some catastrophic complications. Cervical stenosis tends to be more insidious and the symptoms can be extremely vague to start. It can present with some pain in the upper back or lower neck area. Patients can have pain across the neck and into the shoulders in what's called a shawl-like distribution. As it gets worse, patients can have variable degrees of numbness and or weakness in the arms. Some patients have weakness affecting the hands and arms with very little numbness. Some patients have more numbness or pain and very little weakness to start. Because the spinal cord is being pinched, patients can start to develop clumsiness of the legs and loss of coordination in the hands or legs. Patients can also develop loss of bowel or bladder control. The way we diagnose cervical stenosis starts with history and a, and a good neurologic exam, looking for weakness or numbness or something called hyperreflexia. Imaging is also helpful. An MRI shows the shape of the spinal canal and shows if there is any pinching of the spinal cord. It can also show inflammation inside the spinal cord, which would be a very late finding and would typically lead to surgery. An EMG or nerve conduction test can be very helpful for a patient with numbness or weakness in the upper extremities. Numbness in the upper extremities can come not just from the cervical spine, but also pinch nerves in the shoulders, elbows, or wrists, something simple as carpal tunnel. Many patients can have more than one problem and we can identify each one and make a treatment plan for each. Once we identify some degree of cervical stenosis, as long as there isn't any neurologic compromise, those patients can be observed and treated with physical therapy and followed up on a regular basis to look for worsening of their condition. If the patients do have significant pain, epidural injections in the spine can give some good but temporary relief but we still need to be observing that patient for development of any neurologic loss. If things do progress and the patient develops weakness or inflammation in the spinal cord, then spine surgery can be very helpful. There are multiple different approaches, some minimally invasive approaches from the front or a more traditional widening of the spinal canal through the back of the neck can eliminate those symptoms. If there's a delay in treatment, some symptoms may become permanent and that's why early recognition is key. So if patients are having significant pain in the neck that is not going away after a, a period of weeks or a couple months, it's important that they go to the doctor's office to be evaluated with a good neurologic exam and imaging if symptoms are not improving.